Hello people, in this video let us look at how you will uh, prepare for the lower segment cesarean section. Okay, pre-operative preparation. This is what we want to look at. So far we have looked all details about cesarean section in separate video. Now we have started with lower segment cesarean section. What exactly it is? We have looked at the uh, benefits of this fan and seal incision. That is something also called as Maillard looks like which is um, also famous. <coughs> So then what is, this is the abdominal incision. Once you are done with the abdominal incision, you will uh, do a lot of uh, dissection and then you would go to the uterus. When you reach the uterus, you will make incision on the uterus where this is lower segment cesarean section. So on the lower segment of the uterus, you will either make a transverse incision or a vertical incision or a J-shaped incision. That's what this book says. But most common, you would just remember transverse incision. Okay. And then why do you do a transverse incision? What are the benefits of a transverse lower segment incision? This also we have looked at in the previous video. Basically here in this uh, the bladder injury or you, you won't reach the upper segment. You don't want to reach the upper segment, isn't it? But uh, when if you extend this, you, you may touch the uterine arteries. That's the only thing. Uh, otherwise you will mention all other things like uh, less blood loss or uh, the adhesions are less. Uh, Reperitonization is complete. Muscle opposition is good. Closure is good. Right? A scar dehiscence uh, and scar rupture in future pregnancies is also less cosmetically appealing. So, a lot of things you will say. Now, coming to um, the pre-operative approach, which is the uh, main part of this video, guys. So, basically, you will take an informed consent from this patient that, yes, we are going to make a, a cesarean and it should be from her consent. So, informed consent means what? So you know all this so that it, in her own language, you will explain the benefits, risks, etc. Then uh, you will take permission not uh, just for the procedure, you will take permission for the anesthesia, for the blood transfusion if needed, etc. Then the abdomen is scrubbed with a soap or non-organic iodide lotion. So basically your uh, povidone iodine, etc. So basically you are scrubbing the uh, abdomen. Okay, any hair is clipped. Remember this word, it's clipped. Hair is not shaved. It is clipped so that you don't uh, make any cuts on the skin, right? Then premeditated. Sedative, sedative must not be given. There is no sedative here that they are talking about. Then non-particulate antacid is given orally before transferring the patient to the theatre. This is standard things that you know, right? You don't want aspiration pneumonia, is it? Why are you giving an as, uh, antacid? So you will neutralize the existing gastric acid. Ranitidine is given. Why ranitidine is the whole purpose is this acid only, right? So Let's put this here. Ranitidine is a H2 blocker, right? Basically, if you understand, first they are giving ranitidine, okay? This is given previous night, etc. to raise the gastric pH. What this will do? This will make it more basic or it will be less acidic. Then, sodium citrate or something, they are giving orally before transferring the patient to the theatre. So, if there is any existing acid, that should get neutralized, okay? Now, the stomach should be emptied if necessary by a stomach tube emergency procedure. Basically for all surgeries, they will ask the patient to not, uh, you know, come fasting. Basically early mornings they will do these procedures. But if it's an emergency procedure, they will put a stomach tube and empty the stomach contents looks like. Metaclopramide they are giving. Why are they giving this? Basically lower esophageal sphincter, they want to increase the tone. So I'm thinking they don't want any aspiration of this acid from the stomach, right? Uh, then uh, basically they don't want any thing coming out of the stomach. It could be either you can consider as vomit or you can consider as aspiration. You don't want both of this. Okay. So when are you giving this metaclopramide? Uh, about 3 minutes of pre-oxygenation. After about 3 minutes of pre-oxygenation. No, I don't think so much details uh, we need. But you should remember that you don't want uh, any stomach contents coming out. Metaclopramide, um, which is what? Metaclopramide is what? It's a dopamine antagonist actually. Let's just note that here. Dopamine antagonist okay next let's move on to this side yes how is it going what are we looking at we are looking at uh, how do you prepare the woman for a cesarean section so uh, bladder should be emptied by a foley's catheter which is kept in place in the perioperative period so uh, whenever you have seen cesarean sections you have seen that a foley's catheter will be there in the bladder because they don't want the bladder in the place they are trying to push the bladder down and cut the lower segment of the uterus Okay, but uh, I think if the bladder is emptied before the surgery, what about that? That also will be done anyways. FSH, fetal heart sound should be checked once more at the stage. So before you cut the woman, we'll check again fetal heart rate. Okay, uh, then neonatologist should be made available. 
or because the baby is coming out now make the neonatologist available so that they can take over for the baby and resuscitate if necessary check all everything about congenital anomalies etc etc so neonatologist should be available then blood you will keep blood ready in case there is above average blood loss then prophylactic antibiotics you will uh, give what antibiotics are you giving before making skin incision they are giving antibiotics okay which antibiotic are they giving just remember cefazolin okay cefazolin 1 gram once they can give okay but this is an all not absolutely required they are saying antibiotics so you just keep a sterile environment okay just remember this uh, why are they giving this um, antacid prevent aspiration pneumonitis this is also called as mendelson mendelson syndrome okay it's what is it aspiration pneumonitis okay we are still looking at uh, other preoperative things so basically you will uh, secure an iv cannula isn't it you want to administer iv fluids like ringer lactate 5% dextrose etc Uh, what will be the position of the patient patient will lie supine guys as simple as that there is they're just using complicated words here just say that patient is supine but you will uh, put a wedge under the right hip so that you can move the patient a little to the left their left uh, till towards their left so that there will be no compression of the vena cava okay so how will you put they will put where will you put the wedge under the right hip then anesthesia guys you can give spinal or epidural basically you should know here that the uh, sensory block should be t4 level and below for cesarean okay but if it is a normal delivery vaginal you are trying then you still can give epidural anesthesia right to reduce the pain that should be at t10 to uh, uh, l1 okay something like this they have written and s2 to s4 okay then what are they talking about here antiseptic painting you will paint it with povidone iodine uh, obviously you always do that and you will drape it with sterile towels except the place where you want to cut isn't it that's what they have done here we'll show you see everywhere there are towels except the place they will cut isn't it then that is uh, antiseptic painting this is where they are using iodine but initially also they used iodine remember the abdomen is scrubbed with soap and non organic iodine lotion okay then again after this they are painting with povidone iodine looks like right yes 7.5% povidone iodine right then in anesthesia itself there's one more word here that is regional anesthesia okay that is neuraxial so did you understand all the preoperative things that you are doing for lower segment cesarean section guys so so uh, basically a cesarean section before that what and all uh, preoperative things you will do so uh, look at this you are taking an informed consent uh, about the procedure the anesthesia the blood transfusion uh, blood transfusion etc abdomen you are scrubbing with soap and iodine solution hair can be clipped you should not shave do not shave right then pre medicative sedative must not be given because you will fear adverse neonatal effect okay so you will not sedate give any uh, pre medicative sedative ranitidine you will give one night before etc uh, you want to lower the gastric ph then you will give antacid 30 ml something they are talking about so that you will neutralize the ex existing acid right you will prevent pre prevent aspirational pneumonitis also called as a mendelson syndrome the stomach you will empty because all operative procedures usually will be on a empty stomach uh, metaclopramide that is um, you will uh, make sure that the person doesn't have aspiration again from the stomach content so it will increase the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter and the bladder is emptied by a foley catheter which is kept in place okay uh, the, you will check the fetal heart rate before making a cut on the woman guys please pay attention then you should always keep a neonatologist available if you are making the cut cross matched blood Uh, should be available uh, if you are anticipating more uh, blood loss prophylactic antibiotics like cefazolin uh, should be given uh, before uh, before what are they making the incision okay iv cannula you will use to administer fluids you will use uh, which position on the patient this uh, supine position patient will lie in supine position with a uh wedge under the right hip so that uh, there is no compression of the vena cava anesthesia you will give spinal epidural etc this is regional anesthesia neuraxial sensory block you should give t4 level and below for cesarean okay then antiseptic painting uh, you will paint it with uh, you will paint the abdomen with point uh, 7.5% povidone iodine 
uh, or savlon solution and you will drape properly okay this much you have done correct so in the next video let's continue with with the cut right so first you will cut what here incision to the abdomen right then we will talk about peritoneal then muscle then what else we have to talk about uterine incisions then you will deliver the head of the baby trunk of the baby placenta you will deliver then uh, everything they have given in detail delivery of the head delivery of the trunk removal of the placenta they are showing some images here how it is done we look at all this then placenta is coming out here then further how will you suture back the wound that you have created that will be suture of the uterine wound we have to look at that then post operative care how will you care for your uh, uh, cesarean section uh, post cesarean first uh, 24 hours then day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 then after day 5 or day 6 they are discharging the patient okay we look at all this uh, we are looking at what guys lower segment cesarean section meet you in the next video bye bye